Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and today we're going to start Carnage Week. I've been thinking about this for a while and I'm going to record these like throughout the next week or two to try to compile them, you know, and get them ready. And then that way, you know, one week I can just sit and spend a whole week editing all these videos that I've made over the last few days. So uh, what we're going to do though for this episode is we're going to set up Carnage Reigns by talking about Carnage number 11 and Carnage number 12 which features the new writer, Alex Pachnadal, who is going to be writing this and then also Carnage Reigns, one of the art, uh, you know, the writers on there with uh, Cody, who's writing the Miles Morales book. So they're going to be co-writing that series together. So I'm interested to see, you know, or I was interested to see, but I've already read these, what his voice on this book was going to be like, because I really did start to like Rom V stuff. It was a little weird and out there, and it kind of went really cosmic in a, in a strange way. But now I understand where it's all leading. You know, we're leading to Death of Venomverse, where Carnage, or one version of Carnage, is uh, is out there to try to kill every universe's Venom, and he wants godlike powers to do it. He wants to essentially be the new King in Black in a way, or King in Blood or something. You know, he wants to be something that powerful. And so that's his ultimate goal. But then there's also the, the story of Cletus Cassidy. Like, what's going on with that? There's a living, human-looking Cletus Cassidy that's on Earth as well at St. Estes, and he's creating, like, you know, uh, hallucinations or something he can like twist the environment of St. Estes to look like any environment he wants so he can relive some of his most horrific crimes and killing sprees which is really wild so what's going on with that but then we also over in the Deadpool books which we're going to talk about during uh, Carnage Week or Shark Week I almost called it but during Carnage Week we're going to talk about Deadpool 1 through 5 by Alyssa Wong who that story has Carnage or you know coming out of Deadpool Deadpool grows extra arms because this woman finds this carnage sliver after absolute carnage and, and you know injects it into Deadpool. So there's all these different carnage setups going on right now. And Eddie's mullet, you know, and other people I've talked to had these great theories about that before all this was revealed. And now it looks like they had their finger on the pulse of what this story was going to be. And it looks like it's coming together just like they said it was. And I'm kind of excited for it because I feel like this is hopefully a good goodbye carnage story. Because what can you really do with carnage after he gets godlike powers and transcends the multiverse to kill different versions of Venom. You can't really do much with the character after that. So hopefully this is a good culmination and just pulling all of this together to tell one big major awesome carnage story before this all ends. Because with time travel going on, you know, in the main monthly Venom book and stuff, I'm wondering if they're going to at some point go back and reset things. Uh, because I just feel like that's always the Marvel way. They always find a point in time where they go, all right, let's just change things. They did it with X-Men, with, you know, the Jonathan Hickman stuff where they kind of changed everything, and they did it with Spider-Man, you know, with his deal with Mephisto, and I'm just kind of, I just don't want to see it, <laughs> you know? I want to, I, I want things to keep moving forward and just get back to a, a level that now they've gone all this cosmic and time travel route, maybe they can go back to street level for a while as a breather before they tell the next big symbiote story. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Marvel just hits the, the gas pedal and they just keep driving. And uh, and so this one, though, is very much a horror story, but it does have its foot on the gas the entire time. But I got to give Alex credit. Uh, he is doing a, a really good job writing this. Following Rom V, I was really worried because I was like, man, Rom did a really good job setting this up. So I hope Rom has, or they have plans, you know, with Marvel. I hope they have plans with, uh, with Rom for something coming up symbiote related because I did like what Rom did on this book originally. But Alex is carrying the torch, I feel, really, really well. He's setting everything up. Everything that was set up is now paying off because obviously we have our friend here, Kenneth Neely, the serial killer, and then we have Cletus Cassidy. So Kenneth wanted to teleport to the one person. You know, he used that magic staff or whatever it was uh, back on the other planet where Carnage was, or the main Carnage, where he's becoming like a, a god and stuff. And he's growing the horns and he's got the sword and everything. You had Kenneth with him, and that, that Carnage has bonded to that detective, um, uh, John Shade. And John Shade is bonded to, you know, that was the one we thought was going to be the good guy taking down Kenneth, who was going to bond with Carnage. But they threw a twist on us, and they had Carnage bond with John Shade, and they left Kenneth behind. And Kenneth teleports to Earth looking for Cletus Cassidy, and he finds this thing, which actually is a Carnage, you know. Cletus Cassidy is not like Venom. He's not like Eddie and Venom and stuff. It's not an external suit that, you know, bonds on top of you. Carnage is Cletus Cassidy. They bonded together through blood, you know, uh, through a cut in Cletus's arm and the sliver of Venom's offspring when it came out of him went into that, you know, cut and into the bloodstream and manifested itself. So they don't say we are Carnage. They say I am Carnage. 
And so now that it's been split up, you have the carnage that's becoming a god and has its own purpose. Now you have this Cletus who also has his own purpose. He's like, yeah, let that one go be a god. He's a god out there and I'm in St. Estes and I can change the environment in here as we saw in that one issue that Rom V did where, or I think it was Rom V, it was part of his run where you had that like YouTuber or whatever, that streamer go into St. Estes and he found like a house of horrors and we were wondering, why, what's up with that issue? It was like a standalone issue. What's up with that? Well, that clearly set up these two issues here. So, yeah, all of it kind of works. It makes sense. It goes together. And, you know, even Cletus goes back to that, uh, you know, that diner uh, in, like, Middle America where he killed all those people. And he's showing off. He's like, dude, Kenneth, you killed 33 people. That's it? He's like, I've killed 39 people on this one day alone. That's it. I just, just that one morning, I killed 39 people. He's like, so you're not special. And he's like, and just yesterday, I killed like a YouTube streamer who came into this place. And I can turn, you know, St. Estes to look like this diner. I can, uh, you know, once I take a sample of your blood or cut you and, and drink some of your blood, I can, uh, you know, pull open some of your memories. So you see them get into it there. Look at that. Oh, it's, uh, you're just like, Ugh. like this book is great. And the art, oh my God, the art on this book is amazing. You have Francesco Mana, who is doing the artwork, but then you also have Eric Arseniga, who is doing the colors. And hopefully I'm not butchering anyone's names, because the talent these two have putting all this together is amazing. The shadows are really well done. When things need to look bright and intense, they look bright and intense. When they need to look creepy and gory, they look creepy and gory. This is John Shade, who's trying to detach himself from, you know, the Carnage symbiote he's bonded to, who's trying to become a god. He wants to get away from it, so you have his story in here where he's you know trying to stop carnage he's trying to figure out what this carnage wants and this carnage is like dude we're going to become gods and we're going to go cause carnage and chaos throughout the multiverse you know because he's got the powers of you know hydro man now and the spot and you know all these beings these you know uh, different uh mythological beings you know he went into asgard and those places and niflheim and stuff and you know challenged people there and killed people and took some of their abilities so there's something really intense going on with this carnage and he's bringing this detective along for the ride and invading his memories while he's doing it. And, uh, you know, as they go through these portals to find, you know, worlds where there are Venoms to kill. So that's kind of setting that up. And that's what we're going to get in Death of Venomverse. And then here, you know, going back to this diner and Cletus going through Kenneth's memories now. And, you know, being like, oh, you use these butterflies? Going back to that sequence from the first issue, which I thought was really cool. And laughing at Kenneth and being like you're not special and, and Kenneth not liking it so another unlikely duo you have you know whereas Venom is all about symbiosis you know you got Eddie and the suit trying to work together and, and communicate and work together and things like that and, and figure things out together that is not happening here John Shade isn't working well with his carnage and Cle you know Kenneth isn't working well with Cletus and Deadpool isn't working well with his extra arms in the Deadpool book so there's a lot of cool stuff going on and I like that they're playing off that that this is not going well for any of them because <laughs> they're all on some level bad people john shade maybe not so much um but we still haven't gone into his full past yet so we don't really know what skeletons are in his closet and why cletus or carnage i guess the, the god carnage has chosen him so uh so we'll probably get into that but this is where you find out that this cletus was part of the dragon you know the null thing and uh, and then how he got separated from with extremists you know when iron man uh, battled him during that event so that's kind of again setting up carnage reigns and why iron man is involved in the carnage reign story so this is really cool though you know at the end of this he finally convinces you know kenneth convinces carnage to leave saint estes so they can actually go and stop god carnage because again like i said you know kenneth's like dude you're the only one who can stop god carnage and he finds a way to play it to cletus to get him to play game and uh, to play ball which is he says you know, everyone knows who Carnage is, but people have forgotten who Cletus Cassidy is. So they go to this restaurant in this issue, which is really cool. And Cletus is threatening to kill everyone unless he gets his steak and eggs. And that's when Cletus says, he goes, or that's when Kenneth looks at the waiter and says, do you know who Cletus Cassidy is? And the waiter goes, yeah, that's Carnage. And Cletus gets very, very mad because he, again, this version, this symbiote or whatever, really believes it's Cletus. And so it doesn't like that. It has an ego and says, okay, fine, you guys all know Cletus Cassidy as Carnage, so welcome to the Cletus Cassidy show, although he says that while turning into a Carnage monster. He should have just stayed as Cletus, but he does go through and, and you know tear apart that entire diner. And while that's going on, like I said, John Shade is kind of repealing back the layers of his memories that his God Carnage is showing him 
where John Shade had an opportunity to let his partner, this guy named Detective Polk, kill Kingpin before he became mayor. So John could have, you know, stopped evil, but he would have had to do something a little evil to do it. You know, they didn't have any evidence at this point on Kingpin. He went there to stop his partner from committing career suicide and killing Kingpin. But uh, but that's when Carnage is like, yeah, maybe you should have let your partner kill Kingpin because then look at all the lives that would have been saved because when he became mayor, he ruined New York City for years. So maybe you should have let him die. And, and maybe you aren't without sin on some level. Maybe it's not the type of sin you think you're you're responsible for, but maybe there there is a type of sin that you are responsible for. So just kind of neat how they're playing into that. Um, but meanwhile, back at the diner, you have the Carnage show or the Cletus Cassidy show going on, and he's just killing everybody, wanting his steak and eggs, and the cops are trying to negotiate with him and say, like, you know, what do you want? And meanwhile, while that's happening, the cops are getting called in from all these areas, like, hey, there's carnages at a diner. He's killing people. We need all units. We need all units. And meanwhile, some of the units are at St. Estes, and they found that YouTuber guy who's been dead. And that's what Spider-Man, Miles Morales, is investigating because apparently Genki liked that YouTuber or watched his content. And so uh, so that's what Spider-Man was like, yeah, I heard he was missing. They found his body at St. Estes. I came by to, to look. Now that I confirmed that it's him and he's he's gone, the cops are saying it's you know the threat that did it or we, whoever killed him is at this diner a few blocks away, so now I'm going to go find him. And that's where you get essentially the big setup for Carnage Reigns, which is Spider-Man and the cops descending on this, you know, restaurant, this diner, Todd's Diner, which I think is a reference to Todd McFarlane, maybe. Um, but they all descend on it while Kenneth and Carnage are waiting for them, or Cletus, you know, welcome to the Cletus show, even though he looks like a Carnage. So, yeah, really cool. You know, I, I went in full spoilers on this one because... I really wanted to talk about this, and he's been out for a while now because now we're pretty much to the end of uh, Carnage Reigns. I think we got like two issues left to come out. Um, so, you know, we're going to, I'm going to go into full spoilers. And when I talk about Carnage Reigns, we'll probably go into full spoilers on that one too. But I still encourage you, if you liked what you heard, to go pick these up and add them to your collection because I really like these two issues. And there's some stuff I cut out from here because I thought they were really well done. And the, the horror aspect I thought was really well delivered. By the creative team of this book so big shout out to them alex you know and everyone who worked on this book francisco you guys did an amazing job i think this book's amazing um and uh, and i can't wait to see as we sink our teeth into carnage reigns and then after that where everything's going to go from here because obviously we got you know carnage reigns will kind of be one conclusion and then we got death of venomverse by colin bunn coming up later this uh, summer and that'll be i think the conclusion of all this so we will be caught up by then for sure and every time a death of venomverse issue comes out We'll review it weekly on the show because I think it comes out weekly, in, you know, in real life, in IRL. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think if you read Carnage 11 and 12. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and we'll keep talking down there. And if you haven't, like I said before, go pick up these books and enjoy them and come back here and leave your comments, and we'll keep talking down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.